Welcome to the Canadian Beef Cattle Podcast, presented by the Beef Cattle Research Council. The most popular content from beefresearch.ca, available on the go. Before we get into today's episode, a quick message from the BCRC. Beefresearch.ca is full of practical resources for beef producers, veterinary teams, researchers, and students. Customized subscription options are available to keep you updated on new resources, current research, and monthly newsletters. You can subscribe by clicking the Notify Me button on beefresearch.ca. Already a subscriber? Click the Update Your Preferences at the bottom of one of our emails to be sure you're signed up to one of the latest options that meet your needs. This episode is titled, Watering Systems on Pasture, an Eastern Canadian Producer Perspective. When it comes to grazing new paddocks, pastures, or intensifying a current grazing system, one of the major limitations is ensuring that cattle have a consistent source of clean water. Access to natural surface water, such as rivers and streams, can be a major asset in watering system implementation, However, reducing and managing cattle access is recommended to prevent damage to the water bank. Research has demonstrated that cattle have improved performance when provided with water that is pumped into tanks or troughs. Calves grow more efficiently and they have less exposure to pathogens. In addition, it also limits excess nutrients and bacteria from entering the riparian area. There are many different systems and configurations possible for water systems. Even in remote areas without access to electrical power, there are options such as solar or wind power. For producers interested in installing a new watering system, several factors should be considered, including the water source, time of year, water capacity required, and location. The BCRC has a water systems calculator, which is a useful tool that allows producers to estimate the economics associated with installing a new pumped water system based on their unique situation. In Eastern Canada, one of the most common ways of delivering water to pastures is by pumping water from a drilled well through a pipeline system. Now these pipes can be buried below the frost line and used during the winter, or they can remain above ground and be removed during the colder times of the year. An above ground system works very efficiently for rotational grazing setups where many quick connect couplings can be added along the line and the water trough can be moved with the cattle. Of course, individual producers will have their own unique requirements for a watering system. The following producer profiles highlight different ways in which pasture watering systems are used on farm in Eastern Canada. Dandy Little Farm, which is located outside of Amherst, Nova Scotia, is operated by Mandy and Dan DaCosta, and they have been farming beef cattle since 2015. Promoting environmental sustainability and reducing their carbon footprint are major goals for their operation, which they manage through optimizing grazing, reducing inputs, and minimizing a reliance on machinery to move feed and manure. Mandy is also a chef, that aims to produce an excellent product for their direct sale consumers. Their herd consists of 35 cows that are primarily low-line Angus, with a few commercial cows from their initial herd purchase, whose genetics suit their needs for a low-input pasture-based system. They maintain their cattle year-round outside, and they calve once a year on pasture in late spring. They have been using careful grazing to re-establish healthy and productive pastures on 40 acres of land, which had been left fallow for several years before they purchased it. Ensuring good quality water is available consistently is a key component of being able to maintain their cattle outdoors in all seasons. In 2017 and 2018, they dug two multi-purpose ponds with the original intent of storing water, feeding a well for livestock watering, and recreational use. This evolved to include watering on pasture by pumping water from a vertical well to a stock tank in different pastures. The water moves from the ponds to the well to a tote and finally a stock tank that is moved with the herd. The location of the ponds was chosen based on observations of persistent natural water presence in a lower part of the field. However, in hindsight, they would have put the ponds on higher ground so that the tanks could be gravity fed. They say that the biggest part of determining where to put pond locations is understanding your landscape and walking your property. 
It is essential that you understand your landscape, Mandy emphasizes. Dan suggests walking the land during different season and times of year, time permitting, and taking advantage of online tools like Google Earth that can offer information from different times. They state that understanding how surface water is naturally moving on the land should be the biggest factor in pond and culvert placement. The culvert that empties from the original pond follows the naturally occurring ditch, which Dan suggests was actually an error as it contributes to water entering the adjacent pasture. In hindsight, he would have situated the culvert to exit the pond, pond in a manner that contributed to less seepage. Another recommended step from the DaCostas would be hiring the expertise needed. Hiring someone who knows what they are doing has been a key part of this. We could have rented an excavator and tried to do it ourselves, but it was so much more efficient to find people who knew how to do this. The contractors that we hired have been doing this for decades, and we finished in a matter of days, Dan notes. Lastly, the DaCostas suggest lots of brainstorming before any pond is dug. Consider all of the details of the planned use including what are the potential future developments that might affect your decision on the location or design of your watering system. Improving soil and water quality through cattle grazing, crop rotation, minimal tillage, and cover crops is the mission of semi-retired veterinarian, Dr. Peter Kotzeff, who raises cattle in Southwestern Ontario's Gray and Bruce counties. Spanning over 2,000 acres, his farm consists of one quarter pasture land, one quarter woodlands, wetlands, and river riparian area, and one half cash crops. His commercial 150 head cow herd is maintained outside year round. Therefore, water quality and access are integral to his operation success and have led him to utilizing a variety of watering systems over the years, which have included ponds, windmill pumps, drilled wells, and sloughs. His properties also encompass eight kilometers of the Sugeen River, plus numerous natural creeks and streams, which are fenced off to deny cattle access. During the summer, Peter utilizes rotational grazing on large paddocks set up with water troughs. These paddocks are strip grazed with cattle being moved every one to three days, and it takes anywhere from 40 to 70 days to make a full rotation around the grazing cell. On these paddocks, above ground water lines are used with the water sourced from a drilled well with a pressure tank, a pond with a windmill pump, or at one location, a pond with a windmill pumping water to a holding tank located at the farm's highest point. With this system, the water is then gravity fed through above ground lines to troughs in the different paddocks. A backflow pipe ensures that the holding tank is never overfilled. Since a lot of his land has access to natural surface water sources, Peter has set up locations with point source watering sites, which are areas where most of the river or stream has been fenced off and there is only one point where cattle have access to the water. Often these are places that he can cross over from one paddock to the next. And fences are set up to strip graze these paddocks around that single access point. Before allowing cattle entry to any of these point source water locations, a layer of filter cloth is laid down topped with crushed stone or gravel this is gently sloped to the water's edge and prevents damage to the river or stream bank. This summer, Peter is also trying out a fourth summer watering system, which is a portable solar powered water trough, which will increase flexibility and adaptability to different situations. As an example, instead of going through the work of setting up a point source water system, the idea is that he will be able to place the water trough close to the river or stream that's been fenced, put the hose in and pump the water directly to the trough. This means that the cattle will no longer need direct access to the river at these sites. To maintain continuous soil cover and improve soil quality, Peter plants cover crops, which the cattle then graze on in the fall. Movable electric fences are set up to section off areas of the fields with a portable corral system used for loading and unloading cattle. Existing water systems in adjacent pastures are used whenever possible, including point source water sites. However, as the weather gets colder during this grazing period, any above ground water lines cannot be used as they will freeze. When the cover crop fields are located further away from an established pasture, the cattle are allowed direct access to shallow sloughs located on the land. Since these sloughs are only grazed for a couple of months every four to five years, any damage from cattle having direct access is very minimal. 
As the cowherd is housed outside during the winter, the ideal water system during this time is the point source sites as they are the most consistent and do not rely on electricity. However, there are adaptations necessary to make this system work during cold weather, one of the major challenges being keeping the water source open. When the river or streams do freeze, they must be manually broken, which is labor intensive. Utilization of portable windbreaks helps to control snowdrifts around the area. When a point source location is not available, water is pumped from a drilled well. In addition to the watering techniques implemented for each grazing scenario, Peter emphasizes the importance of having an alternative system in place. In the summertime, a backup plan is really, really important because if it's August and 30 degrees and your system breaks down, it could be catastrophic. He tries to ensure that there is a pond or stream that is close to the paddock or on the same grazing cell that he can move the cows to if needed. At the locations with windmills, he has a portable gas water pump on site to use as a backup in case of long stretches of calm weather during the hottest days of the summer. To improve water access, he has also dug another pond on his land with a few more planned next year. His plan is to strategically build big ponds in places where it is hard to access water from other sources, fence off the pond and use the portable water trough system when the cattle are grazed in that area. Peter reminds other producers that there is no one-size-fits-all watering system, and the systems that work for him might not be the best approach for others. It is important to be adaptable and flexible when evaluating the different options. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. You can find all relevant links and information at beefresearch.ca or in the show notes. The Beef Cattle Research Council is funded by the Canadian Beef Cattle Checkoff and strives for excellence in the production of Canadian beef, cattle, and forage through research, innovation, and extension. Tune in every Tuesday as the Canadian Beef Cattle Podcast delivers straightforward insights, expert information, and a wealth of practical knowledge for Canadian beef producers. Subscribe now. This episode is titled, Taking Pain Management Mainstream.